Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. Today I'm going to give you a tour of one of my neighbor's uh, front garden spaces. Uh, I frequently walk past here because this is actually Holly's favorite walk. This is a super shady road and this is the long walk that she tries to drag me to. Uh, but I've walked past here a bunch of times and I didn't realize actually that I knew these folks. I've known these folks for a while, didn't know they lived here, put all that together and then uh, here I am to uh, show you some of the things in their garden. They're definitely plant collectors like I am, so it's a lot of uh, individual super interesting things. Um, and uh, I know some of you uh, you know, like more planned groupings of threes and fives and sevens and then some of you are more like me and like uh, you know super interesting plants. and so. This one's a super interesting plant tour. Um, the entrance to their driveway, everybody in the neighborhood here, you know, these are small urban lots. This one's pretty good size actually though, um, but most of them are small urban lots. There's a lot of concrete uh, and, you know, road spaces. And so, you know, these areas along curbs and things can be kind of tough. So they've used variegated liriope at their entry to their driveway, which is tough as nails. I'll show you a couple other things they used further up that may be more interesting than liriope, but this definitely works and uh, gives them some gives them some color and not something they're going to have ever have to really maintain cut it in the late winter um, the, other than that there's no maintenance they put some celosia behind it and this whole neighborhood is really part shade <laughs> um, there's very few places in my entire neighborhood that aren't old established trees and so we have to use lots of things with foliage color so this celosia is definitely a, a heavy flowering annual plant but uh, it's not flowering much in this landscape. They're just using this particular variety because it has that purple foliage uh, behind it. And they've kind of mirrored that on both sides of the driveway. Well, there's a pomegranate um, behind here and there's no fruit on it again. I think this is a little bit too shady. Um, it's likely flowering every season though. And, and if you've never seen a pomegranate flower, they're super bright orange flowers. I can identify a pomegranate from a quarter mile probably in the spring. Uh, the flowers are just beautiful. And again, this is a great um, foliage plant and flowering plant, regardless of whether the fruit sets or not. Kind of tough to end up with pomegranates here. I'm in zone 7B and, you know, some years we do and some years we don't, but they're pretty reliable flowering and beautiful plant. They have some, a, a larger growing distillium uh, next to the driveway here. Don't know what variety this is. It might be Blue Cascade. It has that kind of blue uh, hue to it. Just a great ornamental plant. Uh, distillium. Although they're in that witch hazel family with Laura Petalum, the flowers are really insignificant along the stems and it's really just grown for this um, interesting weeping habit. I've got a dwarf one at the house called Jewel Box and then you can have varieties that get, you know, like this, four and five feet tall. Uh, they've got a little path that goes down and uh, to the backyard and I've yet to actually see this backyard garden space. So I might be bringing you that tour as well. I just haven't seen it yet. Uh, and again, uh, repeating the distillium, uh, after the uh, steps that go down in a uh, container here with some uh, interesting lantana. I think this is definitely, a lot of these bright showy ones are definitely annual um, lantana. Uh, we are um, just not quite as a, uh, we're on the border of where the lantana are perennials. Uh, behind it is a, um, a tea olive and you've seen lots of osmanthus fragrance on this uh, channel, but that's what they're using is kind of a screen between them and the uh, neighbor down here below them. These will flower in October, November, and then on and off throughout the winter, winter depending on how mild the uh, winter is. Uh, they're well protected in here. Uh, again, I've talked about this before. In my zone here in zone seven, uh, these osmanthus aren't gonna be in a lot of winter wind, so they can be used as a little bit of a screen here. But normally I wouldn't put them out in the open like this. If I, if I didn't have this tree protection and this urban heat you know, protection, uh, that they that they have here. Skipping over to the other side of the driveway entrance, they've got the uh, liriope planted in that same uh, triangle uh, on the other side. It's a little fuller here, so I imagine it may be getting a little more sun, and the celosia is blooming a little bit more uh, on this side, so maybe there's just a hair more sun uh, on this uh, side. They actually left their ornamental kale in these three containers here for the whole season, and I guess probably let it come to uh, flower and the uh, birds have taken advantage of that. And they're growing their tomatoes above ground in, uh, in containers, and they have a drip irrigation system watering each of these, uh, each of these containers. 
probably this is their only sunny spot and the soil's poor and so that would be the reason to bring them up or maybe they have voles or something like that that are causing their tomatoes damage i haven't asked why they're in containers but this system seems to be working pretty well for them in probably their only full sun uh, space i've skipped past their uh, mailbox and i'm standing under uh, dogwood uh, this is just a, a native cornice florida it's doing great out here uh, it's in a large mulch space and uh I think that's probably the reason it's 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 do it's doing well. I, I think that a lot of times we try to put uh, dogwoods in little circles in our lawns, and uh, you know they're not the best in those conditions. It's got a few yellow leaves on it, but this is on the old growth, which tells me it's just actually kind of dry out here. Uh, we, we've gone a little while uh, without rain. <laughs> it's cloudy today, and it's supposed to rain today, but um, it somehow managed to go around us for a little while. So I think that's why it's losing. It's got a little fall color in the understory but the upper part of the tree looks great. It looks like it flowered like crazy because it's covered in seeds. They've got some hellebores planted underneath and they also look uh, quite dry. And so I think that that's, uh, that is what's going on out here. I can see now that I'm looking down and I had just noticing this, they're using this expanded slate uh, in their planting holes. So this is almost certainly, uh, they have voles here. And so that goes, but going back to those tomatoes is explaining that a little more, but you can see each of the planting holes, they're mixing some of that slate in. That just, that rock keeps the uh, voles from being able to dig around them or comfortably dig around the base of their plants. So uh, that's explained now. There's a spirea behind me that still has some flowers on it and doing pretty well in this part shade condition. Normally you'd think of this as a, a pretty much a full sun plant, but this one's, this one's doing pretty well. Most of the flowers have passed, but it's still got a little bit, a little bit of color on it. Uh, there's a, um, a salvia here. I think this one, this one's called hot lips. And if we get over here, you can see why this one's called hot lips. It looks like a, a white salvia that's wearing lipstick um, is why that one's called hot lips. But on hot lips, we'll get sometimes almost all red flowers, sometimes almost all white flowers. And then again, you'll get that little combo flower. This is a great perennial. It tends to bloom super, super heavy uh by late spring especially an established one like this this one was probably blooming super super heavy in may and then it'll slow down sometimes in the heat of the summer and then pick back up put on some more growth in the fall and bloom well again so this is another thing um, out here by the uh, road they've got the lamb's ear planted and this is a he sent me a photo the other day of a pretty big snake in these so um, i don't know if uh i don't know if it's still here or not there are very few snakes in this neighborhood but we're not going to disturb the snake don't even know what kind it is uh this lamb's ear, this is the perfect place to plant it. And I'm going to tell you why. They like poor soils. <laughs> and certainly out here by this curb, uh, you know, this is poor soil. So this is not a plant you put in super organic rich uh, spaces. It's also super, super drought tolerant and would kind of be intolerant of putting it next to something that has to be watered all the time. And so again, out in a curb area, hell strip between you and, you know, your sidewalk and the, and the, and the road, uh, lamb's ear is a great thing for that. It's hardy in like, I think zone four to eight and up in four, five and six full sun. Here, it's in a part shade condition out by a road space and it's kind of, it's super, super happy. And you can see how much it's spread since this was probably just one little plant uh, at some point. They've got some angelonia uh, growing in these containers uh, and uh, they have the expanded slate even in, even in their uh, container plantings uh, out here by the, uh, out here by the road. This is a yucca, and I think this is color guard yucca is the variety. What a great plant, super, super cold tolerant. Uh, almost everybody watching me can grow this plant and uh, just, just a giant splash of color. This is in part shade here, definitely take full sun. Uh, got a dwarf Lorapetalum next to it, and I don't know if this is purple daydream or what variety this is, but uh, Looks great out here. It's also a little color in the center because again, we're not looking at a full sun uh, space. They've got this really nice brick landing out by the street and a uh, path that comes in here to a front gated space. Uh, they had nice little paths around here for their, uh, their dog. Their dog unfortunately passed recently uh, and uh, greeted Holly uh, frequently when we, would come, when we would come down the road. It was always kind of funny because he waited for Holly and Griffin to completely pass and then we'll go, roo, 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 roo. you know, he was brave after they were gone, um, but uh, kind of missed seeing them uh, coming past here. The uh, tree, 
that's uh, right here is a deciduous magnolia and it, likely Jane or one, one, of the, one of those that has the uh, purple or purple and white combo uh, flowers. They will uh, lose their leaves uh, in the fall and then bloom uh, very early uh, as they're getting their leaves back in the spring or slightly before they get their leaves back uh, in the spring. There's a clarodendron back here. We'll get excited about that because we're going in there to take a look at the clarodendron in a minute. There's a hardy geranium out here by the road and there's a bee working working the flower on it. This is another thing that's kind of tolerant of, uh, of poor soils and will bloom most of the summer out here. They're getting just enough light on it to keep it blooming, but not so much that it kind of makes it ratty looking. Then they continue with the uh, lamb's ear in several spots. Uh, they're hellebores planted under the, uh, under the magnolia. Uh, that will, the, the hellebores will bloom in January and February. Don't know what, you know, um, they look like just very traditional, uh, very traditional hellebores. They'll probably get the uh, kind of lavendery, lavendery color flowers. There's a um, hydrangea paniculata out here by the road. And um, I don't know how many hours of direct sun that one's getting, but it's doing pretty well. They've done some cutting on it. So I'm guessing it's kind of stretching on them, but that little bit of cutting they're doing on it's um, keeping it in pretty good shape. Couple junipers out here by the road. These are another good thing for this poor soil conditions and heat zone. Uh, this is Percumbens nana. This is a really tight, compact one. I, you know, I grew this. I grew this variety for years. Um, it's kind of slow growing, and so um, you know, if you're if you're looking for a ground cover juniper, um, Blue Pacific or Blue Rug, and several others are probably better. This one's more of an ornamental juniper. Uh, it'll grow. It'll grow like this much a year as opposed to like blue rug that can grow two or three feet in a year once they're settled in. Another one of those uh, 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 hot lip salvia. There's some cannas in the back that are doing quite well. They must be getting pretty good sun uh, with the orange flowers over the top of them. And they're in front of a very exciting flamethrower redbud. So they're one of the uh, <laughs> one of the few people who have gotten a flamethrower redbud that want them uh, at this point. You know, we've talked to Denny Werner several times and you can see, again, this is a park shade condition, perfect place for this. Uh, you can see how many colors this tree has on it at once. All the new, the newest growth here is kind of a purple hue and then they fade toward yellow and then toward the middle of the plant, they're greenish yellow. Just interesting all the time, from the time it blooms until the, you know, till, till, till the fall when it drops its leaves. Just a super, super interesting plant. Above me, <laughs> this is super interesting. This is a pokeweed. Uh, this is a native, I think people would call it a weed, uh, that uh, most people are trying to get rid of. This is, this is a perennial plant. It seeds itself prolifically, but it's a perennial plant. He has, this is the third year with it coming back, and he stakes it to this uh, two-hour parking sign. Covers the two-hour parking sign beautifully. Um, we're near NC State's campus, and we have two-hour parking signs, unfortunately, because people will park you know, um, to walk to campus. All oh, this is a pretty long walk to campus from here. Birds take the seed on it, and it's kind of, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful plant, and it's a native, it, it belongs here. But uh, uh, kind of interesting, I've never seen one grown as an ornamental plant. Up above the pokeweed, there's a very large holly, I think that's a Nellie Stevens holly. Uh, it's absolutely covered in fruit, but the, they're, they're green right now. They'll turn red as the fall uh, comes on, but that's a very, very happy holly. I'm sure that's some very happy bees. Uh, in the spring, there's a very large growing laurel petalum right behind it, and that purple is kind of a nice backdrop uh, to the uh, flamethrower red bud and those canna lilies. And I don't know what variety it is, but it's obviously a very large growing one. It actually could be ruby, because uh, I, I had ruby, which is supposed to only get four or five feet tall at my nursery, and had one get that big. Uh, so that's what it could be. There's a dogwood on the outside of it, and there's, there's a large, very large um, magnolia grandiflora. Uh, and I'm not sure if that's on their property or the neighbor's property, but it's a nice backdrop to all of these, you know, these other items that they have. So I've come up the driveway and this is, there's a gate over here to my right. That's the uh, entry, entry to this uh, front gated uh, space. Again, there was another gate uh, right in the front. Um, if you're parking out on the street to come to the front door, uh, they're growing some passion flowers uh, on the uh, fence, uh, which are great for pollinators. It's already, you know, August, and so, you know, they've grown, they've grown really well. I just don't know how much flowering uh, they're gonna do, but the vines, the vines look great. Uh, they've got a black gum 
plant it in the front garden space and that'll get the brightest red fall color uh, you can imagine that thing will just be just on fire basically uh, in in the fall and uh, whoever they got that tree from did a great job uh, great job with it uh, this is a plant that I've recently planted in the front yard uh, just down the street from here this is uh, that Sestrum uh, Parquet and this is a, a much more established older variety this thing I don't know how long it blooms honestly this has been blooming for two months and this you know this one has and uh, the one that's at the house, you know, I put in in flower and it's still in flower. That video has got to be at least six weeks old uh, at this point. And so this thing grows rapidly and, and just flowers like crazy. Uh, bees absolutely love this plant. I understand this plant is a noxious weed down in um, Australia. Here in my zone seven uh, area, uh, totally just, uh, just an ornamental plant, a non-invasive uh, ornamental plant. It's kind of interesting how that works, you know, where something can be perfect little play nice with the natives plant in one place and then go absolutely bananas in another. Uh, but we'll, we'll move inside the uh, gate uh, uh, over here. And there's uh, right behind the gate as you come in, uh, there's a dwarf cryptomeria. I believe that's Globosa nana uh, cryptomeria. That's a, uh, I've got that dragon prince cryptomeria at the house. They're very similar. Dragon Prince has a slightly tighter growth habit, but both are soft to the touch. Uh, uh, great plants. Uh, the Nandinas, I think, are Harbor Dwarf. Um, I, I've got Flirt I've shown you guys. I, th I think I probably have a video for Harbor Dwarf uh, as well, but these five uh, Nandinas look good in this space. The new growth on this one, uh, throughout the spring, they were very brightly colored. Under planting the uh, black gum or some New Guinea in patience, uh, they look, they look great under there. They're more sun tolerant uh, than others, but in this front yard, it's kind of a mixed bag of sun and shade, and they're doing quite, quite well under the tree. There's a uh, variegated abelia here. Could be Miss Lemon. Uh, I don't know. That's one that I have at my house. Could be Radiance. Uh, new, it's flowering. Bees, bees love those bright little, bright little plant in the landscape. These two junipers here, I think, are just blue rug. Uh, in all in all likelihood again the same brick uh, sidewalk is used that's you know from the entryway out by the street and on this side there's some duke gardens uh, cephalotaxis uh, uh, plum use planted as foundation plants great plant i mean just really super super easy industrial little uh, uh little shrub that uh, works great in the uh, part shade and yeah, there's lots of garden art uh, throughout this garden. They do a great job of blending, blending those things in. They've got some drip irrigation uh, right behind uh, in the back of this bed uh, hooked up where you can see that little brown uh, line running, running from that. And that little black, the smaller black tube, I think probably runs to their tomato plants out on the driveway. This holly that's next to the front porch is Steed's holly, which is a more upright. This is a Japanese holly like Compact as their soft touch or sky pencil and lots of dots of Japanese hollies, but this one steeds Steeds can be cut into a little perfect Christmas tree. This is how it grows. If it's just left alone just kind of a, a Wider column than a sky pencil. So this front garden space has no lawn and you guys know I'm kind of drawn to uh, these no lawn uh, landscapes uh, It has a lot of interesting paths uh, It has the brick path. We have the slate path we have gravel paths and they're all just kind of mixed uh, together and it makes it super interesting. But what they've done here is they've put basically put paths, you know, throughout their front front garden space and little uh, little retaining walls built out of uh, field stone. Uh, and, you know, there's some moss on the field stone in the shadier spaces. Just looks great. It looks, looks like it's always been here. Uh, it's blended in, blended in nicely. There's uh, the star here. Uh, right in front of the front door is this uh, weeping Japanese maple. This is out here pretty exposed and it, you can see it flushed out nicely uh, and the tree's not unhappy, but here we are at the 1st of August and there's definitely some, some burn on it. Um, our, our sun, the sun here in you know, zone 7B in the summer, midday sun is which is what it's getting. Uh, it's a little bit crispy and so they're probably never gonna get quite as good a fall color on it as you would. Um, if it wasn't uh, in this full sun, but it's it's happy enough and it looks great. Um, it's underplanted with some vinca, uh, vinca minor, which has the uh, smaller has the smaller leaves. 
Uh, Vinca Minor is a little easier to control, but it's still, you know, still Vinca if you um, got to be careful with that. Uh, they've got it pretty well contained in here by these paths, uh, which have a, a, a metal or a plastic edging on it. I guess this is, I can't tell if this is, this is plastic edging. Uh, and the gravel is kind of containing it in that bed. Otherwise, you know, you wouldn't want to put it someplace where it can just, you know, take, take off running. Drip irrigation, you can see, running to most everything in this garden. Another one of these variegated uh, abelia. Here's the back side of that uh, cestrum. Look how many, look how colorful that thing is. It's so showy. It's just amazing. Uh, there's a leucanthemum here, or Shasta daisy. Don't know the uh, variety. There's lots and lots of varieties. This one's uh, doing pretty well. We're toward the end of, you know, end of the season. They've had to stake, they have to stake these up. Uh, in this landscape just because there's not quite enough sun on them that will happen. They'll get floppy if you don't. Uh, behind it is a native uh, uh, American beautyberry and uh, the bees are working these, uh, working these flowers pretty hard. You see what's interesting on these is they don't bloom all out at once. This thing's been blooming for weeks and weeks and so these blooms that were back here have become the berries. These berries will eventually turn purple uh, in the fall. I can kind of tell the difference between the purple and the white berrying because the uh, white berrying American beauty berries have white flowers. And so this one having the pinkish flowers tell me these berries are going to turn purple. But again, it's continuing to flower and continue as it grows all season and forming the berries behind it. That also means the berries mature at a different rate. So the birds have a longer period of time to be feeding on this plant. This plant's giving itself a great opportunity for birds to spread it uh, everywhere. Uh, there's a Camellia sasanqua behind it i don't know what color or variety but um evergreen backdrop uh, in a garden of things a lot of things lose their leaves in here a lot of things go to sleep in here so having some sort of evergreens uh in this space uh camellia sasanquas will bloom in october november ish another american beauty berry there and another one of the uh, variegated abelia variegated abelia abelia will take part shade uh, this, I think, has reached the point of, you know, probably too much shade on that one. Here's a plant that I've never shown before. This is a Sephora. This one is called Father David. Uh, it has these uh, little um, narrow pinnate leaves and uh, flowers with uh, uh, the typical pea family flowers. But it has, it's kind of a purple, uh, purple and white uh, flower. I don't know how well it flowers in this uh, part shade condition. This, this plant's zone six hardy. Uh, beautiful. It's a little bit thorny. Uh, grows like crazy. I'm sure it produces it produces a uh, uh, tons of seed, like everything. Also in the uh, pea family, include red buds in the pea family, uh, and uh, wisteria. Lots lots of interesting plants in the uh, in the pea family. But this is a beautiful, um, typical multi trunked uh, shrub. Uh, this one's been uh, kind of tree formed as a single trunk uh, plant. Beautiful foliage, again, not sure how much uh, flowering it's able to do in this part shade space. Okay. There's a spirea planted on the other side of the uh, weeping Japanese maple, and it's got, I don't know what variety this is, but it's got really great uh, new, uh, new growth on it. I don't see that it's done any flowering this season, so again, you know, I don't know what the sun or shade conditions of each little space in this yard is. Typically, that probably want a little more sun than it's getting, but it's offering some nice color. Uh, I call this next to it an opportunity. <laughs> I'm sure they do as well, trying to figure out what's going to go uh, into that space. Uh, this is a neat uh, bird bath they have out here. He's got this uh, uh, dripper attached to it, so it's constantly dripping uh, fresh water uh, into it, just barely enough to keep it full um, and overflowing slightly. I'm sure I'm interrupting the birds coming in here to, uh, to enjoy that. Uh, the place I'm standing is right here when you come into the front gate and you would have the option to go right where we just came from or to the left um, or straight to the front door. Uh, really like the way this is, uh, this is laid out. Uh, there's a lemongrass in this container, uh, which if you tear a piece off, smells just like lemon. I sold a lot of this stuff at my garden center and people say it keeps mosquitoes away and other things. I doubt it does any of those things, but it's just a beautiful grass uh, that uh, looks great in that container. And again, it smells just like lemon. There's another uh, cryptomeria uh, behind it, the uh, Globosa nana. Uh, I'll show you an upright uh, cryptomeria in the second part of this uh, video. You see how different the growth habit can be on two different, uh, two different plants in the same, uh, in the same genus or actual species actually the um tree above here is a claridendron and um 
our glory bower, some people call this tree. This tree is unfortunately, it is a noxious weed uh, in my area. I've got several of them just outside the fence and into the uh, wooded spaces. Any space uh, in this neighborhood that's got a little bit of a sun, a little bit of sun, uh, you'll get these uh, clarodendron germinating. These, they've got two of them. They've limbed them up into trees. They're absolutely beautiful. This is a great fragrant flower. Uh, if you've listened to my channel for any length of time, you know I'm not a giant fan of super fragrant things. This one just has the perfect fragrance. And I can be walking through the neighborhood and I can smell it this time of year and go, I know there's a clarodendron uh, nearby. So it's, a, it's, uh, it's very fragrant, but it's not overwhelming uh, to me. And most fragrances are. The bees work these. Uh, the swallowtails, the monarchs, the hummingbirds. This is the hummingbird favorite uh, plant. It blooms like this, super, super heavy, just gets absolutely covered in flowers for weeks and weeks. It blooms for a long time. Then uh, these, uh, it sets a, uh, a seed that turns bright red uh, and the seeds are forming here. Uh, but these will, get, these will get redder and redder uh, in time and become just as decorative as the flowers, really. Foliage is beautiful on this plant. Of course, it doesn't have any real natural enemies here. Um, and so it, uh, uh, it does quite well for itself, but again, these will just, you know, they are, again, a noxious weed, uh, unfortunately. Probably doesn't matter whether anybody's growing it as an ornamental. It's not going to change the fact that they're being spread around by um, the birds at this point. But beautiful flowering tree, uh, one of my uh, absolute favorites. I kind of hate it uh, doesn't behave, unfortunately. I've decided to cut this video into two parts, uh, realizing that I've been very wordy with all these kind of individually interesting uh, plants. And so I'll wrap it up here in front of this uh, beautiful uh, clarodendron, which, you know, we're, again, we're catching here in, uh, in full flower. And I, I wanted to show you guys uh, this plant. And I, I watched the hummingbird on the one that's next to my uh, fence at the house just all day long uh, working this uh, beautiful tree. So thank you guys for following along with the channel. I'll have part two of this uh, tour video uh, up very soon.